Okay, I've got a fence post to pull. People who've seen my really old videos know that I have a video on putting in a gate on a fence, on a chain link fence, and that's finally outlived its usefulness. The whole fence is going down. I've already removed the fence fabric and now it's time to pull the posts. I'm starting out by soaking the area around the bottom of the fence post for several minutes. Just letting a garden hose run there. Soften it up a little bit. I have an 8 foot 2 by 4 actually I have two of them. I used up all my old ones so I had to go out to the hardware store and buy and this is an actual really low grade crappy worst piece of 2 by 4 I've ever seen so I'm not sure about its strength. Uh, I've successfully used a single 2 by 4 in the past but if this one shows any signs of cracking then I can double it up, put a few screws through, and have the two by two two by fours paralleled. One of the first considerations I have with this kind of thing is uh, how much lift do I need. So I have to consider how much I can raise the the long end of the lever and still have the short end. Uh, where it's going to be attached to the post, uh, have that raise up enough that it actually gets the, the concrete block more or less out of the ground. So I'm thinking about like this but that's actually probably more than it needs. I don't think there's much more than that, so I can pull it back a little bit, and I should still have plenty of lift, so I think that's about where I'm gonna do it. So I have a 7 16 inch drill bit here uh, for a 3 8 inch diameter bolt, and I don't see the point in putting a hole right down in the center seems like it should be up higher helps if I take it out of screwdriver mode and put it in drill mode So there's the hole right about here, and now I like to do it with the 2x4 laying pretty much on the ground, and I can use the hole I just drilled in the board as a guide for the drill so it hopefully won't skate around too much on the pole. Battery's dead. I thought it felt a little weak, so I gotta get a new one.
it's about a six inch uh, long, three eighths inch bolt. So I just slipped an old board under the short end of the lever so it doesn't dig into the ground when I start lifting. And this might be a real hard pull or it might pop right out. There we go. Pretty easy, please. Nothing fancy. And this is an exceptionally large piece of concrete here. If you've seen my video where I put this fence post in many years ago, you may recall that I was replacing an existing regular diameter fence post here and that the original hole was at a weird angle and also off center. So besides the original hole I dug, I also had to dig another hole right next to it. So this has got a lot more concrete on it than you usually would have. Okay, I've soaked this one while I was pulling that one. This is a line post, so it's a smaller diameter. Because there's a raised guard here, I can't get in this way. I have to come in at an angle. That one was pretty well endowed too.
This being the larger post at the corner, whose name suddenly escapes me, this one could be a harder pull. We'll see.
think I better get this rain gutter out of the way. Okay, I probably don't need the board under this one because it's sitting on the gravel, but... Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven posts that I pulled just a few minutes a piece and with very little effort. Definitely the simplest scheme that I've seen anywhere on YouTube or any other kind of recommendation. All you need is a drill, a bolt, a 2x4, and ideally some water to soften up the soil a bit. That's about where I put the hole relative to the width of the board. And of course I orient the board vertically this way so you've got as much material between the bolt hole and the bottom for strength. I don't think it makes much sense to put the bolt hole centrally located. Then you're just wasting some material up here. If you put it at the bottom, it's going to break out for sure. Okay, how to maneuver these things with the big balls of concrete on them. I usually try to get my cheapo cart here. This is going to be a little harder than the others because it's a bit uphill. Just 
try to roll the bottom edge up onto the edge of the cart, swing the pole around. Normally they roll on real easily, but this one was, there's a bit of a ledge there, I had to roll it uphill first. This one could be kind of tricky. I'm boxed in by this other fence.
Okay, what was that all about? Well, my local trash pickup allows me to throw away things like concrete and metal poles and pretty much anything that'll fit in the dumpster except for a few restricted items. And if I don't throw them away in the dumpster, then I have to pay extra money to get rid of the stuff. Some of this I could haul out to the street, but it's a lot further away, a lot more work. And there's no guarantee that anybody will come pick it up, you know, scrap dealers, especially when the concrete is attached to it. So, uh, the very first thing to do in my case is to get rid of the concrete and keep the metal poles. And I can then choose to take them out to the street and hope a recycler will take them or just put them in the trash dumpster. I had that strip of metal which uh, I was using to gauge a good height for the poles to fit into the dumpster. If they were much longer than that they might keep the lid from closing and uh, that leaves enough of a stub to give me a good handhold on these and what I typically do then since the bolt holes that I drilled through are in most cases below where I cut the pipe I can just stick the bolt through and grab that with both hands and use it as a handle to pick up the concrete which then can go into another load uh, in my trash dumpster not really the same load as the pipe probably but two or three of those at a time over a couple of weeks I can get rid of all of that without incurring any additional inconvenience or charge from the trash company so that's what that's all about if I didn't have my torch, my acetylene torch here, I probably would have just used my sawzall with a metal cutting blade and cut them that way, but it would have taken longer. And I don't get the chance to play with this very much, so it <laughs> gives me an excuse. And here's all the top rails that I already cut up uh, yesterday. So, about three of those is enough for one load makes the dumpster too heavy otherwise and that's probably enough for one load I did another video on filling some sunken areas in my yard and putting grass on and uh, some of the topsoil I had delivered it was left over and I didn't have any place to put it I got a bunch of these cheap Home Depot and I think Ace Hardware five gallon paint tubs and just filled those up and stacked them in the corner of the garage. Now I'm going to use some of that. All right, that's some of the water that was in the soil from my hose and then it settled into the bottom of the first post pit. It's going to take more than three gallons, or not three gallons, it's going to take more than the 15 gallons of topsoil I have in here. Probably only fill a couple of holes with that, but that's a good way to use up my excess topsoil. And I'm going to use my same 2x4 to tamp it down a little bit as I pour it in. All right, all the holes are filled in, tamped down and topped off. Rain gutters put back in place. I'm going to let these settle a little bit and then top them off again. Throw some grass seed down. It's still going to take me some time to get rid of the rolled up netting. That may be a little too much to go in the dumpster, I'm not sure yet. They don't strictly require that the top of the dumpster be closed, so I can probably throw it out in the dumpster. Anyway. And then there's the old gate, the one that I did my original video on. Uh, that one's still in pretty good shape. Maybe I'll just haul that one out to the street and see who takes it before trying to cut it up for disposal. Next up, putting in all my 
plants, but we had a frost last night, which I didn't know was coming. And it seems to have taken its toll on the pepper plants. I'm hoping that they uh, can recover from that, but we'll see. I have a train odyssey coming up really soon, so I probably won't know until I get back from that. It took me eight five-gallon tubs of topsoil to fill those holes. So 40 gallons of topsoil.